Hola again, amigos. I'm Lance from Permanent Records, and I have another recent arrivals video for y'all. The recent arrivals section in front of me here is packed, jam-packed full of fresh used records, all $10 and up. All of our bargain bin stuff goes elsewhere, so you know you're only gonna see quality stuff. In our recent arrivals every week, we put out a fresh batch of about 60 to 100 fresh used records every day, adding up to somewhere between three and 500, sometimes more recent arrivals every single week. We are very, very busy as I know you are too. And that's why I make these videos to save you time uh, and show off the records that we have. So you don't have to come down here every single day, every single week, even though I do encourage at least a weekly visit because we can't cover everything that we've gotten in in the last week in these short videos. But I would like to emphasize that I am very, very busy acquiring these records, getting them priced, getting them out on the floor, and doing all the other back-end administrative stuff that I do, and it leaves me with very little time to create this content and make these videos. So if you all could, please, in exchange for me creating this content, share these videos with your friends. Please spread the word far and wide. Share this video and this channel with anyone and everyone you think might be interested in it. Trust me, they will thank you later. And also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like our videos, and ring the bell to be notified when we post new ones. And shoot me a comment. I love the discourse that goes on in the comments section below. I do my best to reply to every single comment that comes in. And uh, yeah, I love reading what you all have to say, uh, good, bad, or otherwise. Also, if you got a little extra scratch and you like what we do and you want to represent our shop, you can get the Life is Short Buy More Records Moto Reaper and Skate Reaper at PermanentRecordsLA.com. You can also get our Roadhouse uh, Reaper design. The Life is Short Have More Fun slogan. Uh, they're on t-shirts and totes as well. We got hats and all sorts of other fun merch at PermanentRecordsLA.com. All right. And while you're there, be sure to pre-order your copy of the self-titled Mammoth Record. This bad boy originally came out in 1981. The band was from Florida and they self-released this album back then in a super limited edition. I'm not sure exactly how many copies were pressed, but not very many because this bad boy is rare. Uh, you know, OG copies of this hover around 200 bucks or so, and we're repressing it so you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars to get your hands on the vinyl. Mammoth were a hard and heavy Southern rock band, but one of the things I love most about Southern rock records is that they oftentimes incorporate big riffs and catchy hooks and incorporate the softer side of rock and the country side of rock as well. And Mammoth achieves all of those things on this LP. This is their sole album. They didn't put out anything else beyond this, unfortunately. And this thing shreds. And you can pre-order your copy, the reissue now at permanentrecordsla.com. You can also stream this bad boy on all the digital streaming platforms. If you want to just preview a couple of tracks, I highly recommend Southern Sounds uh, and Outlaw. The, the opening track, Change the Run, is pretty banging as well. So uh, Peep Mammoth, uh, if you like it, please pre-order it. That'll help support us and help me stay motivated to continue to make these videos for you. All right, on to the recent arrivals. So most of what I have here is under $200 or so. There are a couple exceptions. This Larry Young record is up there. This thing is super valuable. It's a super, super clean copy. Most dealers would call this near mint. We call it VG plus because we like to grade things very conservatively. Uh, this record originally came out on Perception, uh, but Larry R Young recorded quite a few, about 10 or so albums, maybe upwards of 12, um, for other labels that you've definitely heard of like Blue Note, Prestige, and New Jazz. He was an American jazz organist, you guessed it, from Newark, New Jersey, uh, just out of, outside of New York City. So he was definitely in the mix with all the heavy hitters and the Blue Note um, stable. This record, oh, look at that, I got a phone call coming in. That's another reason making these videos is so difficult because if my phone's not ringing, the shop phone is, or I'm getting a knock at the door, there's always something going on. 
Anyway, uh, this record is a killer spiritual jazz LP, and everybody is digging spiritual jazz records these days. Uh, this one's in high demand, very Afrocentric, gets a little bit out, but not too far out from most people's tastes. Comes very highly recommended. Go stream this, and uh, if you need a copy of there, a super clean original copy, hit us up. All right, and what's next in recent arrivals? Where do I begin? We got not one, not two, but three Desert Sessions slash Queens of the Stone Age related 10 inches on Man's Ruin. These are all on colored vinyl. Those of you familiar with Caius and the desert rock scene from the 90s and early 2000s know how desirable these things are. Super cool and super hard to come by these days. Um, yeah, just if you like stoner rock or desert rock, then you need to get down with those desert sessions. And obviously you're already familiar with uh, Queens of the Stone Age. This is no big deal, usually a copy of Purple Rain. They're around, you know, we get these all the time. We don't, however, get the purple vinyl version of it. This one also has the poster and has the hype sticker on front. So that's what makes this copy of Purple Rain so special. The ethnographic recent arrival train just keeps on rolling. We got a couple more. Uh, th these are just two examples of a bunch, dozens of ethnographic records that are in the recent arrival section. We had to expand the, the bin in the shop to accommodate the quantity of ethnographic records that we've gotten in recently. Here's another uh, amazing one. This is an Indian, a classical Indian record called Mahar. And not only do we have one, but we have two copies of this bad boy. Uh, this is also an audio file pressing with a, a one-step plating process. So those of you uh, who buy audio file records exclusively, here's a good uh, one to grab in the Indian uh, department. And here's another collectible uh, Turkish ethnographic record. What great album cover uh, artwork this one has. And uh, yeah. You know, what more can I say? There's just so many Akora releases in recent arrivals and in the international section right now. It's unbelievable. I guarantee you, you won't find more Akora releases in any other store uh, at this time. We got a still sealed copy of Anthrax's Spreading the Disease. Super cool. And I love that hype sticker there. This record contains not one hit single. Still sealed. Unbelievable, crazy, crazy stuff around here lately, and it just keeps on coming. Here's a very rare classical record. This one um, has is not the very first pressing. That one's a four-figure item. This one is a later reissue, but still has quite a bit of value. And if you're ever digging through boxes of classical records, this is one to keep an eye out for. It is very valuable and sought, off, sought after by collectible. Uh, classical collectors, I should say. Here's Ted Hawkins, Next 100 Years. This is just a rare 90s record on Geffen. Big pop fans will love this Dua Lipa flexi disc here. Just another oddball collectible. Here we have one of the Kiss solo albums. This is Gene Simmons with the poster included. I don't have time to pull the poster out. But yeah, these records uh, don't necessarily come with my highest recommendation. Uh, Ace Freely's solo album is the best of the four in my opinion, but the posters fit together like a puzzle. And if you have all four of them, it makes this massive panel. It's probably like, I don't know, three or four feet wide or something. It's really, really colorful and super cool. All right, uh, speaking of pop music, we got a, an expensive Lana Del Rey thing here. Um, this one, I don't know the title of this. Honeymoon, presumably. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I believe that one's on colored vinyl as well. And then a hard, hard pivot from Lana Del Rey. We have the cows. The cows are a really great Midwestern. I believe they're from Minneapolis, Minnesota, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Well, anyway, they did a bunch of amazing records in the 90s on Amrep and other similar labels. Maybe even did something on Man's Ruin at some point. Um, but yeah, very unsung, really brutal noise rock band. If you like Flipper and the Melvins and things like that, the really, really harsh and heavy, Jesus lizardy side of grunge and post-hardcore, uh, yeah, this is for you. Cows. 
and another really, really great 90s record. This is an OG PJ Harvey to bring you my love. I love PJ Harvey. She's such an icon and uh, deserves more accolades than uh, she gets. I think she's kind of like the Patti Smith of her generation. She is an incredible artist and um, yeah, there's a reason uh, our boy Nick Cave wanted to be with her. Uh, the Anniversary, this is an amazing record and one that most of you who know my taste wouldn't think that I would be a fan of. Well, The Anniversary are from uh, Lawrence, Kansas. I'm from Missouri. I went to school in Columbia, Missouri at Mizzou. And I would go see The Anniversary and the Get Up Kids and all the bands that were coming out of that part of the country quite a bit. It's pretty much all there was to do. Um, so that's what I did and I got really into this scene. The Anniversary uh, started off very similar to the Get Up Kids, very poppy, emo uh, type rock and roll. Um, but unlike the Get Up Kids, I guess maybe there's one Get Up Kids that kind of takes this trajectory, uh, one Get Up Kids record that does that a little to a certain extent, but not like this one. These guys told, these guys and gal, um, they totally uh, embraced 70s classic rock on this album, which I believe was their last album before they uh, disbanded. Anyway, Your Majesty, I think is a modern classic. If you'd like to dispute that, feel free to do so in the comments below. These songs are super catchy and they're way more timeless than the earlier anniversary material, which I think is a little dated. Don't get upset with me uh, about that. But um, yeah, this record, just if you don't like it from the opening cut, Sweet Marie, you won't like it at all. So just go ahead and pass. But if you're a fan of the classic era Rolling Stones, you know, like Some Girls, Exile on Main Street, Sticky Fingers, and you, you want to hear the anniversary's take on that style, Your Majesty is a record to own. I might, I probably already have that filed at home, actually, otherwise I'd consider keeping it. And the audiophile pressing um, uh, train also keeps rolling. We got tons of ethnographic records and audiophile records in the shop from the Dan Schwartz record uh, collection that we bought not too long ago. If you haven't already watched that video, please go back and check that one out. I show off a lot of the uh, higher end things from that collection in that video, some of which are finally making their way to the bins now. Well, here we have a mobile fidelity copy of Rumor. This is a long out of print, uh, 1995 pressing of that. Here we also have uh, two records on the Audio Quest label. Um, I'm not particularly familiar with either of these titles, but those are both audiophile pressings. And within the context of the Dan Schwartz collection, I would say they are definitely worth um, previewing at the very least. Here you have Super Session with uh, Mike Bloomfield, Al Cooper, and Steve Stills. Just, you know, a legendary album. And that's the audiophile pressing of that. We have two rare audiophile Genesis titles, audiophile pressings on 180 gram of very common albums, but if you have a $10,000 turntable and you need the nicest copy, nicest sounding copy of these particular albums, you can't go wrong with these particular pressings of Rod Stewart's Never a Dull Moment and Madman Across the Water by Elton John, two classic rock staples. All right, we'll get in more to my tastes, my personal tastes. I am a huge Kraut Rock fan. I think Noi and Kraftwerk are two of the best Kraut Rock bands of all time. And Mikael Rother, or Michael Rother, depending on what side of the pond you're living on, is one of the founding members of both of those bands. And we have a bunch of copies, four in fact, of his, I think this is the second album, Laminda Hertzen is the first, the second one is Stern Taylor, uh, on Sky Records. Sky Records, an essential, a quintessential uh, Kraut Rock label right alongside brain and if you are a fan of Noi, um, these records are very similar to Noi's material. They're a little more accessible than most of the material on Noi's three albums. Well I guess technically there's four but either way 
Uh, it's got a lot of the same elements, the motoric beats, the like soaring guitar solos, the just like epic nature of those jams, uh, all while being far more accessible. And that's probably why there's more of these in the world than there are the Noi records on Brain. I'm sure those didn't sell nearly as well as his solo albums did. But these sonically are just as good in a lot of ways as those Noi records and definitely worth your attention. Uh, yeah, don't sleep on that. We also just have more Kraut Rock than just about any other store in the U.S. We go out of our way to acquire as much Kraut Rock as possible, and we take biannual record-buying trips overseas to acquire those records and cool German New Wave records like this Palais Schomburg record. This is actually more of a post-punk record than a new, uh, a new Wave record, but if you like Joy Division and the darker side, maybe slightly more harsh and experimental side of post-punk, you have to check out Pelle Schoenberg. This is a fantastic record. All right, so on to a little more fun stuff. The debut Runaways album. This is an absolute classic. I mean, what more can I say, that, say about this that hasn't already been said? Obviously, if you're watching this, you're probably already familiar with the Runaways. If you're not, but you're familiar with Joan Jett or Lita Ford, that's where they got their start. Cherie Curry, uh, Vicky Blue. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a Kim Fowley production, uh, and this is one of the greatest all-female rock records that has ever existed. Really paved the way for a lot of bands. Not that the Runaways were the first, because there were a lot of all-female bands that came before them, i.e., or e.g., I should say, Fanny, uh, Bertha, um, Cradle, which is Susie Quattro's band with uh, her sisters, Pleasure Seekers, there's a bunch of girls, uh, all female girls in the garage comps that I highly recommend, which is like garage rock bands from the 1960s, mid 60s in fact, mid to late, and uh, let's not act like the Runaways were the first, but they were fantastic. Very punky attitude to this thing. Um, you know, some people would call this a punk rock record, and I would not argue. I would say Cherry Bomb is definitely a punk rock song, and it's one of the best songs on this album. It's a classic. And then for the wind down, uh, we got Terry Riley. I've talked about Terry Riley. He's an amazing uh, composer, a modern composition guy who does very repetitive hypnotic compositions, very long form, ambi mostly ambient and soothing uh, almost new agey type music, very similar to Philip Glass and uh, Steve Reich, if you're into that sort of thing. And we don't get those very often, so I figured I'd show them off. Here are some things that we get in the shop semi-regularly that are just classics, in my opinion. Honky Tonk Heroes. If you're looking for a gateway drug into country music um, or the outlaw country scene, Honky Tonk Heroes is one of the best in the genre, period. And, um, you know, those of you who have an opinion about Bruce Springsteen that is not positive, I implore you, I dare you to listen to this album on a foggy Sunday morning. Nebraska is a masterpiece and it has none of the frills and excess of some of the E Street Band records. This record is The Boss, an acoustic guitar, a harmonica, a four track recorder and a ton of reverb. Bruce Springsteen, believe it or not, was a big fan of Suicide, the band. Uh, and if you're not familiar with them, then we need to talk. We'll do that in another video. But he took a lot of influence from Suicide on this album and it shows. It's absolutely stunning. It's not a fun listen by any means. It's a very dark and somber record, very, very, um, emotive and just bleak, kind of like the album cover, but it is essential listening for sure. Do not die before you've had a chance to listen to that record, um, you know, and then, you know, come back to life a little bit. A perfect transition out of uh, Nebraska is Harvest by Neil Young. Everybody talks about you know, Zuma and Tonight's the Night and On the Beach. I love all those records as well, but there's just something about Harvest that is un... It's just unparalleled. The songwriting on this record is impeccable. Every song is perfect. Every song is timeless and just imminently enjoyable. 
I just get a really warm and fuzzy feeling every time I put on Harvest and I highly recommend owning this if you don't already. It also has very cool textured album art and um, you know, it's just a masterpiece. I love this uh, design on the cover. It's so minimal, simplistic, and yet elegant. Anyway, I, I can't gush long enough about Harvest. And then we'll take it a slightly different direction. Lou Reed, the one of the masterminds behind the Velvet Underground. His album Street Hassle is one of my favorites of his. Uh, this record is absolutely amazing. It's got everything from the title track to uh, Leave Me Alone, which is like a super dirgy, like repetitive kind of F you of a, a song. And then it also has the, uh, oh, I can't think of the, I think it's called Shooting Star, if I'm not mistaken. But it's this like really floaty, almost like um, college graduation type anthem. And it's instrumental, just absolutely amazing stuff. You probably heard that on, I don't know, it's, it should be on a Wes Anderson soundtrack if it's not already. Um, and then I've talked about Dwight Twilley. Well, this is Dwight Twilley. I've talked about Dwight Twilley in the past. I can't remember if I've talked about this record, but he deserves uh, more love than he gets. Looking for the magic off of this album. If you've never heard this, you absolutely have to stop right now and go listen to listen, Looking for the Magic. That, out, that song is absolutely amazing. It's a, a perfect pop nugget, a power pop nugget to be exact, and they just don't come much better than that. Uh, Twilly Don't Mind and Sincerely are my two uh, favorite albums of his. And um, yeah, this one, this is a still sealed original pressing of that. Uh, I don't know why you would. I'm tempted to crack this to play it right now, um, but I won't do that because people like sealed records and they want to keep them sealed and that's their prerogative. Who am I to ruin their enjoyment of that element of this hobby? All right, uh, I only got through two days and we're creeping up on 20 minutes here, so I'm going to have to make part two of this video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've already spread uh, the word for me to your friends and family about our channel and about what we do over here at Permanent Records. I truly appreciate you watching and uh, subscribing to the channel. And I'll be back soon with another video for you.